So what's everybody been up to? Wow, much. Any uh, OST? Uh, any OST stuff? In, in OST space. Uh, I guess we can mention, Gail, that we had a similar session with with uh, with the uh, with the SDS uh, competence network, competency, com yeah. uh, com competency network, competency network. I didn't able to yeah. say that. But, uh, it's yeah. a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> it is with uh, yeah. with Hannah, uh, Peter, right, and Hannah. And, uh... Oh, Hannah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, so slide? we've had two. Yes. No, it's uh, well, it was it was remote. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, so but exactly we've, we've had two webinars. We've had two webinars earlier with kind of the, the tradition basics and terminology. And, and ours was um, trying to look at what does, what does SCS have to offer uh, an agile community or an agilist, a practitioner. So yeah. it's, uh, it was a dialogue meeting. Very good. Ooh, just me yeah. and Gail riffing, <laughs> basically. So how did it <laughs> <Pretty> go? <much. laughs> what, what does a CS can offer to Azure community? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually part of what we're going to discuss today, probably. I don't know, but uh, it's very similar. <laughs> yeah, I, I think, Alida, the, the sh my short answer would be um, remembering to ask the important questions, not just using terms without assum or, or with assumptions about what we mean by them. So mm -hmm. clarifying a bit. And also... Uh, discovering that there's um, there's a wealth of literature about some of the things we are very interested in, things like um, structuring of an organization in terms of hierarchies, such as um, how do we really deal with and do we really want and what is autonomy? So mm. we had those kinds of conversations. Mm. And also we saw and, some uh, surprising, uh, not surprising, but uh, interesting differences between SDS and OST, right there? Yes, yes, very much so. Or rather, I would say that SDS is much, much, much broader. And and I yeah. also have discovered uh, quite recently that OST also is not a uniform thing. So I've okay. seen um, um, Don Deguer refer to um, MRE OST, so EOST, as, as something separate, just to, to make sure that that's wow. what he's talking about here. So mm -hmm. that, that uh, OST as a concept, as a term, is being used a little bit more widely as well. I think yeah. there is a there is a confusion about OSC with open space technology as well. Uh, so a lot of people, right, of course. Yeah. So mm -hmm. OST that's a big difference. Bracket E is open system theory by Emery's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OSC without E is I think a lot of people see that's two things. One mm. is open system theory in general, like mm -hmm. uh I can't Dr. pronounce Dr. his Lanfie. name. Bertalanfi, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then there is always open space technology. So the mm -hmm. it's a bit like VSM, right? The one that I like and the one that I'm not in favor of. So. Yeah, <laughs> value stream I think or no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Martin seems to like the other one. So this is good. It creates a balance. There is a balancing <laughs> um, feedback loop here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we have we have room for overloading terms but not concepts yeah, yeah exactly yeah. well if you want to know what i've been up to yeah please on, please, the, please. on the ost front <laughs> yeah. um, uh, a couple of weeks ago i was involved with a webinar that uh the sts roundtable organized bert painter who was the president with the human centered ai group oh yeah hmm. and um the webinar was about how do we, you know, we've got uh, overlapping values and um, ways of thinking that probably we should come together and explore those. And that's what that uh, webinar was about. And <clears throat> from that, um, they're now looking at uh, what ways could we come together. And the guy who heads up, the human centered AI group in the US. It's a fellow named, uh, I've got, I can never pronounce his last name. His first name's easy, Ben, but his last name is, um, I did write it down somewhere Schneiderman. Schneiderman. Okay, I see what you mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, not Spider Man, Schneiderman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he, he's got about over 3,000 members in this group 
And um, he puts out a note every now and again, and his note that he just put out was about uh, AI. He'd, he'd like to see AI being developed for super tools that humans can use to uh, really help them with their decision-making businesses and, and so forth. But he said a lot of the research is being thrown at AGI, Artificial gener Generative Intelligence, which is looking at how do we make autonomous decision-making machines, basically, and keep humans out of the loop. And he, at the end of his uh, uh, note, he said, I wonder how to make the case for focusing on super tools, that's these AI super tools, as the more appropriate path to serving human needs. And I started to think about that and thought, well, OST might be able to help him here. So I've developed, uh, with insights from Maryland, uh, a unique design workshop. And it's called Making the Case for the Desirability of AI Super Tools. And I've just finished my draft paper and I had to write it in such a way that people who are unfamiliar with OST and how you design these unique de uh, design workshops, um, yeah, I had to ex explain in layman's terms a little bit about OST, the search conference, and the um, <clears throat> the PDW. So if you're interested in knowing how to put a unique design together, which is distinct from, let's say, the search conference where you, you don't mm. know what the end uh, strategic endpoint is um, and you've got to develop it through the search conference, whereas in the unique design, you work backwards. This is our endpoint and uh, how do we develop a way forward to get there? So if you're interested, I can flick it through to you when I... Uh, go through and fix up all my grammar mistakes tomorrow. <laughs> Definitely interested. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just explain a little bit because I, you'll probably get unique designs, well, I, from my experience, more often than running a full search or a, um, yep. even a PDW. In, in your workplaces, it yeah. could be, um, you know, about marketing, it could be about a new product, it could be anything. Uh, and you can start to think, well, we could put an OST unique design here to um, flesh out how we're going to get to that endpoint. Yeah. So I'm I'm interested in the fact. Um, am I right, Ali? Dad, you did some unique designs with um, with Alex, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. And yeah. Um, we've done the same. I've done the same in the past. Um, I've got four or five, four, I think, case studies. Mm -hmm. um, I've done in different places. Um, weren't necessarily aware of OST back then. Right. Uh, I use open space technology, but um, but I realized afterward that it was actually a unique design because I was using participative design. I was looking using participative strategic de strategy development, and right. then um, now how do we? deliver to that. So I didn't realize back then it's OSC, but uh, now I can see. And for those of them who didn't work, I real I now know why. I mean, they worked, but they were not sustaining. The results were not sustaining. It was a wonderful day. People were very happy. The yeah. energy continued for another week, but then pff, dropped right. because we didn't do um, DP do design after that. Yeah, so, the two-stage model. Yeah, it was yeah. just one stage. Yeah. Still, I've it result. I tell you this. It resulted in that department. Um, they were one of the lowest in the entire company, in terms of the um, cultural indicators. Quite disengaged. Everyone was trying to leave. In nine months, complete turnaround. They were one of the. They had one of the highest number. No one wanted to leave. Um, they won few awards, just in a space mm -hmm. of a span of now. And it was all based on participative co-creation right so 
yeah. kind of OSD, but um, mm -hmm. not necessarily following Marilyn's uh, or uh, uh, Fred's method. Okay, so can you highlight some of the things that made, you know, the stuff that you're doing now, especially with Alex, mm. you feel that it's going to be stickier, uh, it's going to be more of an OST unique design than what you did before? Yes, um, so I noticed that you're starting, right? So um, <clears throat> I guess we uh, one of them is, a um, couple of them. One is uh, the whole... Um, idea starting from a collective desirable future, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to design a um, future together mm -hmm. rather than in some of my previous ones, it was just a leadership come and share the strategy, for example, mm -hmm. in an open space manner, but still someone else did the thinking. Mm -hmm. That was one of the key differences. Uh, the other one is the uh, rationalization of the conflict, which happens with starting with what is the what are the changes that we are noticing in the environment. Mm -hmm. Let me just let few people in. Um, so I think in the past that rationalization of the conflict was not something we actively seek. Um, hey, Paul, mm -hmm. welcome. Yeah. Hi, Harry. Is that Harry, HK? Yeah. Hi. Welcome, Good morning, Harry. good evening, you know, wherever you guys are. We are <laughs> all over. Actually, maybe if everyone uh, changed their label to the country or city they yeah. are in, I think it would be nice. Let's just, let's just do that. Absolutely. You're Okay. Did you want to repeat that question, Martin, for the benefit of everyone? Or yeah, yeah, I will. We just I continue. Will. Yeah, um, we'll get to it, right? Well, it'll be on the recording. Yeah. So, uh, so actually, just just a quick point for everyone: the we are re recording this, um, and uh, the recording ends up on a YouTube channel for Systems at Play. Yeah. So um, if you I guess uh, if you don't want yourself to be in a recording, um, yeah, you, you should uh, you, you should take steps. Um, and otherwise, uh, we're loving to have you here. Um, Dave, I think, is in his car at the moment, so that's probably why he's got his video off, and he may join us. Yeah, in yeah, in 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 the flesh, or in in full video later. Paul is obviously also in his car and trying to fiddle with his, <laughs> with his phone at the same time. Um, so, yeah, I was asking Alidad a question around the concept of unique designs, which is part of OST, and, uh, and, and effectively asking him how he had in the past or in, 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 his, in his recent work incorporated unique designs and what, what made them unique and what made them sticky with uh, the organizations that he was working with. So that's, uh, that's where we got to when, when you folks just joined us. Yeah. So we were just about talking about the rationalization of the conflict as part of the search conference or one of the techniques you can use, which is acknowledging that when you are working with a group and you are collectively participating to get to a to an agreed future, not everyone actually have to agree. So we will acknowledge that there is going to be conflict and disagreement from the beginning, and then we will look at looking at the ways to work with that conflict. Even sometimes use it as attention for creativity. That was something that I picked up, uh, which in the past a lot of effort was put into getting everyone to agree or buy into the a purpose which uh, is one of the things I like about OST. You don't have to do that. Um, we acknowledge it that we are all equal, but when everyone, when we are all equal, we don't have to all agree to everything. And I think that's the key. So um, that was the other difference. Um, the whole open nature of things, because um, I've used um, OSD-like or unique design in the past for a strategy development. And 
The thing that made it stickier was the participative nature of it. The thing that um, I now see that was missing is the open nature. So starting from the um, outside, starting from your uh, extended social field to articulate your strategy rather than starting internally with what you have. Um, and the last thing, which I think there are still a lot more, but I just highlight a few of them, is once you complete your search conference, once you work with a group to participate to design a more desirable future for you and then turn it into objectives and goals and collectively, um, then you need to design an organization so that community need to continue and evolve to be able to deliver to that strategy. So anyone that is impacted in any way or is going to Im implement that strategy need to be part of a process which is called um, which is called PDW or um, help me out participative design workshop. Yep. And they are designing an organization that say, if this is the future we want to get to, here is the structure and the organization that needs to be done, the capabilities that need to be there in order to deliver to that strategy and make it make it happen. In the past, when I have done that, not exactly the way that PDW works, but similar um, with some differences, it is work. But when we came up with, okay, yeah, collectively we come up with the strategy and then we bring it to a more um, autocratic hierarchical organization that already exists without changing that, implementation of the strategy hasn't been as successful, it's still far um, superior to anything they have done before, but not as successful as, as it can be. So these are some of the things mm -hmm. that I've done with the unique design. Right, thanks for that, Ali Dad. So, um, so Harry, Paul, um, as sort of uh, new members of the, the group here, and thanks by the way for, for coming to join us. Um, I'm wondering, would it be a good idea um, for you to uh, introduce yourself and also express what you're interested in learning from this uh, from this group and this meetup? Harry, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, th thanks so much for uh, Ali Dad to uh, uh, invite me to this group. I mean, I stumbled upon you know, uh, uh, OST open source theory very, very, very recently, right? Say a couple of weeks ago, and I was I was at a uh, you know a summit, a startup summit, and then some someone bumped up and said, "Hey, have you guys heard about uh, this new group? Uh, there's some you know uh, seasoned professionals in there." I was like, "Wow, let me just go ahead and check that out." That's how I I landed on OST. Yeah, I don't know any jack about OST. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry about that. You know, with with no prior knowledge at all. Right, uh, I've been you now doing uh, you know systems database systems for the past eighteen years. That's the only thing I know uh, in the IT ecosystem. And then for the past two and a half years, I've turned myself into an entrepreneur and uh, running my own shop uh, in in Hyderabad, where we serve uh, customers uh, on some of the professional services that we offer. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's a very short uh, uh, intro about me, Martin. <laughs> Excellent. Um, now, Paul, I don't know if um, if you've got uh, the ability to, to to say anything. If you can, do you want to get yourself off mute? Oh, you can off mute. Do you want to introduce yourself to uh, to the rest of the group here? Uh, if not, that's okay we can continue and feel free to raise your hand or, or jump in anytime you want to say anything. Um, I'm just going to assume that's you're right. driving. Oh, Paul, go ahead. I think I was on double mute. Um, so hi, um, I'm Paul Monks, obviously. Um, I guess the first thing I'd like to learn from this is how to use uh, uh, Zoom a bit better. Um, so I became aware of uh, OST through some earlier posts um, on LinkedIn by Martin yourself and potentially a few others. Um, certainly dived a bit deeper into it uh, at last the other week. Uh, so I'm keen to, to learn a bit more. Probably the, my key question from a, an Ask Me Anything is, 
uh, if I was to try and introduce this uh, to my boss, the, the CIO of a fairly large organisation who um, you know, is not necessarily from the, the uh, agile type era, um, what, do you, what would the best way uh, to go about that would be? Yeah, right. so that, that's one of my key kind of things, but kept general, in general, uh, keen to learn um, a lot more about it. Yeah, and Paul, let me get this right. I think you work for a Victorian government department, is that right? Oh. Anyway. Sorry, yeah. I put myself back on mute. Yeah, yes, uh, for, um, for a Victorian government department, a fairly large one. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, Peter, can I throw this to you? Um, as someone who has, uh, I assume, introduced a, a number of organisations to OSD in the past, and also familiar with Victorian government, um, what, what what sort of advice would you have for Paul? Well, usually there's a blur burning platform <laughs> to introduce OST. And I had, oh, this is about 10 years ago now, I was asked to um, do some work with a Victorian government department that's fairly well known. Uh, to try <clears throat> to try and deal with um, bullying that was taking place in the human resource department, and it was so bad that it was making the uh, front page of uh, the national newspapers. So the HR director said to me, well, "What can you do to uh, get this off the off the front pages?" And I explained to him about how the search conference. Um, can be used to develop trust amongst the participants um, because you start out wide uh, analysing data in the what we call the extended social field, the wider community, and no one owns that data. And as you start to analyse and explore it, um, people start to realise that oh, we're all living in the same world and we we, we can, uh, if we work together, we can tackle some of these bigger issues. So, and then you work down into the more difficult uh, aspects of the search conference um, where you're looking at things like what's working well within this organisation, what isn't, and what do we need to create. But by the time you get there, you've sort of just created that trust between the participants. So... This the um, search conference was about creating a new strategic plan for the HR department and how they could better uh, uh, provide services to the different divisions in this this um, Victorian department. And then uh, at the or during the search conference, um, people uh, were describing. The department as the uh, like the Lord of the, the Flies, where the weak the weak people were picked on, and uh, that's where the bullying was taking place. But by the end of it, people started to come come together and started to look at well, this is not a a healthy environment for people to work in. It's actually an unsafe environment, and um, what can we do about it? So they came up with a plan that not only improve their services to the different divisions within the department, but um, looked at how they could um, uh, eliminate bullying that was uh, taking place. And one of the strategies was actually to set up team-based structures. So we completely changed the bureaucratic structure, which is, the, which is designed to uh, induce internal competition so people compete against each other. And where the stakes are high, that internal competition can get quite nasty. So we restructured the organisation to a team-based structure where, which induces cooperation. So people working in teams to meet goals that they've agreed to meet with uh, management. That's where I, I used it in a um, Victorian government department. And I was sworn not to uh, disclose it to anybody. <laughs> oh, sure. If it's, uh, it's, uh, if it's bullying in HR, I don't think it's uh, probably a good thing to uh, to mention. But I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued, Peter, that you said, you know, that in this particular case, you started with Search Conference. Now, Search Conference 
is usually, if I'm not wrong, a two-day or sometimes even a three-day event. Normally a two-day yeah. event. Two-day event. So that's yeah. an investment. It what was. If, yeah. What, what if there isn't a burning platform? And if, uh, you know, it, it's perhaps, you know, in Paul's case, it's, it's, it's less of a crisis that needs to be managed. And it's more about, well, business as usual. What are we, how can we improve in the existing way of working? Yeah, well, it could be uh, not a search and not a PDW, but what Ali Dave was talking before, coming up with a unique design. So there might be a specific instance in the organisation about how we can uh, better market a product or how can we get cooperation into developing a product or whatever it may be. You can start to look at putting a unique design together and... Um, it, what a unique design, as I was saying earlier. The, the search conference is uh, designed to create a strategic plan in a, a very uncertain environment. So you don't know what your strategic endpoint is, so you have to go through a process to develop that strategic endpoint and the strategic goals and action plans to meet those goals. Whereas a unique design, you know what the endpoint is, so then you use elements of the search conference and the PDW to put a unique design workshop together to help us get to that endpoint that we know we want, want to be. And that's what I was saying before with this uh, program I've just put together for the STS Roundtable and in, in, uh, Human Centered AI in North America, is they defined what the endpoint was but they didn't know how to get there or they could think of a way of getting there and um, as soon as they said that <laughs> my ost little gray cells started to fire up and um, i put a draft together i ran it past marilyn emery um, and she had some very good insights and i've just put in finished putting the second draft together and an email it off to Marilyn just to get a final uh, feedback. But as soon as I do, I'll, I'll send it to you, Martin, and you can distribute to people who are online here because I don't have their contact details. But it'll give you an idea of how you can use OST uh, with, in an organisation. It could even be used... You could develop a, a unique design to look at how, to we, how can we incorporate... OST principles and concepts into Agile, something like that, mm, within, cool. a, within an organisation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that, Peter. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, making sure that we try to get everyone involved. Yeah, uh, um, you've been a uh, uh, also a new, like myself, a new member of the group and had a few questions. Anything come to mind in... Um, in your experiences and also your recent experience with the, the STS group in Norway that uh, that comes to your mind? Yes, and perhaps as an open question, uh, because I don't really know how to ask it yet. I'm, I'm finding that's, that's a recurring theme that we have questions that we can just see the outlines of and, and we iterate through better and better questions before we start getting to the answers. And one of the things that was, we so like you mentioned, we, we had a conversation in the, um, Socio-technical systems uh, network here in Norway, <clears throat> and I learned then for the first time that some of the academic pushback that has been given against socio-technical systems theory has been that they haven't properly addressed questions of power. And uh, the question that I was raising was the question of strategy in the context of agile, because that I think is a very interesting dynamic. If you are trying to distribute decision making and make a non-hierarchical um, uh, organization and you're trying to combine that with what has traditionally been seen as quite a centralized initiative that is coordinated across the entire enterprise how do you do that so I would like to invite um, the participants here to share their thoughts about how power is addressed in an OST context and what consequences that has right anyone you care to uh, nominate to help you 
I have to kick this off? No, no, I, I wouldn't because it's a very difficult question. So it's it's something that I think we should collaborate in trying to to find chunks of that we can that we can work at. So anybody who, in, who would like to start in a design principle two organization here, which for those who are not familiar with, it's a team based structure. Um, you st management and the board, the CEO, the executive. Uh, still have corporate responsibilities. You know, they 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 are responsible for the health and direction of the organisation. They are responsible for the safety of the employees in that organisation. So that power resides with them. And if people are not uh, adhering to safety rules, for instance, then they are jumped on just as. Uh, like they are in a bureaucratic organisation. So that, that that's why in a, a um, team-based DP2 structure, those teams are not autonomous. They can't go and do what they like. Their work is defined by their goals, uh, which is covers the dimensions of their work, their output, their quality, safety, waste, etc. cetera. Um, but they can't go... Uh, if you know, they're falling behind in production. They can't lift guards off machines to help, you know, get product through more quickly. So they're not autonomous, um, and that's a power um, differentiator. But they do have the responsibility to control and coordinate their work to meet their agreed goals that they've uh, negotiated with management and normally there's a, a hierarchy say in an organization of 100 300 people the the hierarchy of function would be the strategic group the middle management group the operational group and they they're, they're differentiated basically on planning horizons so the strategic groups looking out two years maybe more five years the the CEO or the MD is a boundary rider so it doesn't interfere with the um, the workings of the the day to day workings of senior management, but is out in looking at what's happening in the the external environment. What are the changes taking place, and, uh, and really communicating that back to the senior management group, and that they might decide well we need to revisit our strategic goals because of these changes or opportunities happening out there. The only other time is uh, he or she might intervene in the senior management group is if you've got <clears throat> managers that are not cooperating. And sometimes you get that because at the senior management level, you have specialist uh, jobs. You, you might have tax, accounting, marketing, production, whatever, procurement. They're all specialist roles requiring specialist skills. So those people control their work. So the person in charge of finance has got statutory obligations to report on auditing reports and things like that. So they control that. But they have to coordinate their work to meet the business goals. And sometimes you get people, and I have had this in Telstra, where the procurement group managing director wasn't cooperating. Uh, with the wider group, you say, I'm only going to concentrate on what I'm doing. And then, and then CEO had to step in, say, this is the way we work. If you don't like it, there's a door or we'll, we'll find another role for you. So that's when they step in. But that, that, that's the, the power structure, if you like, within a DP2 organization. So I can't yeah. understand why academics can't see that. <laughs> they must think it's uh, laissez-faire, do what you like. I, I think the pushback there was slightly different. It wasn't that that um, SDS or IOC don't have any mechanisms for dealing with it. It's just that it hasn't been addressed that much as a topic. So uh, I think that was uh, what they were talking about, the research literature. So I, I just have one, one short follow-up, and that is um, the, the thing that I have a little bit of a hard time figuring out if if the design of the organization is is participative uh, so we're all contributing to to designing 
the whole of, of the organization that we're working within, um, a lot of the strategy work will, will end up finding that some units don't really have a place in the new organization because of the, the way that uh, the market is or developments and, and our focus. And that means we have strong conflicts. So how is that typically addressed um, in the intersection between we have to make painful choices that not everybody's going to agree with? And this is kind of going back to where we started uh, the conversation earlier, which I would like to summarize is, is that um, finding consensus is not necessarily the goal. Healthy conflict is good. But, but still, it's, it's how can we be both participative and then go against large groups of the organization? Yep, uh, that happens. And that's part of your preparation and planning. If you're going to move from a bureaucratic to a team-based structure, there's likely that jobs will, well, they, jobs will disappear, especially supervisory roles. But we had one, uh, Meryl and I work with a national disability care provider a few years, just before COVID, actually. And um, as, so there was 2,500 people across the country involved with this organisation. The way we designed it was uh, doing PDWs, two-day workshops, in about a 100-person area. So what you do then is invite a cross section of that hundred person area, twenty of them, twenty percent to the workshop. They do the design, send it back the design back to the other eighty that weren't involved for their input into it. But when when we did the twenty plus PDWs, what was clearly coming out that there were some groups that were no longer needed, um, and that. We we anticipated that. We worked with the unions and the Fair Work Commission, which is like our Industrial Relations Commission, to set up programs that would allow people to make the adjustment when their job disappeared or a whole department disappeared in, in this case. Um, so we had, for instance, redundancy packages. But we also gave the option in the redundancy program for a person to work in a new area for six months and then make their decision. So all that preparation and planning was done beforehand because um, you know that uh, going from bureaucracy, design principle one, to team-based structure, design principle two, there'll be fewer people in design principle two. Um, I don't want to go into the redundancy of parts and redundancy of functions model, but it, there are more people that work in design principle one bureaucracy than there are in design principle two. So you automatically know that people are going to, um, uh, jobs are going to be made redundant. So all that stuff has to come up front. Management, CEO has to be clearly on board with what's going to happen. And if people are uh, arcing up and not cooperating, that's when the Senior manager, the CEO, you know, it come down and say, "Well, this is the way we're going. If you don't like it, here's our redundancy package. You can try a new role for six months. If you don't like it, here's your redundancy package, and off you go." So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm wondering, Peter, in your experiences, have you ended up with most of the practical cases? You know, uh, looking at workforce redu reductions on the basis or on the back. <laughs> Yeah, the I've had that. <laughs> yeah. I had that at Carlton United Breweries right. many years ago. They had 70 supervisors and they wanted to get them down to 20. Uh, so they, did, they said, well, the only way you can do that is if you change your design principles, which mm. we did too. Mm. Uh, the keg line went from <clears throat> uh, a manager, supervisors, about three or four of them, leading hands and then the workers, all in different unions, so big demarcations, mm -hmm. to one manager and three cross-functional teams of about 12 in each. You, and the unions, different unions within the teams. Mm -hmm. And I went back to see them about two years later, and those guys, there were no women there, um, had, had their own maintenance budget, over, over a million dollars. So they were managing that. 
as part of their goals. So, yeah, that was mm -hmm. a, a case of getting using the uh, the workshop to get rid of people. Yeah. Just a, just a small comment, because I, I was also part of that meeting that Gail mentioned with the Norwegian SDS community. And um, and uh, there were uh, there were a few things that I've that I've sort of seen before about the differences between OST and SDS, and and this is one of the things that I think is really standing out. And the big difference, also based on what I read and also what Marilyn has said uh, again and again, that the SDS community really haven't taken in the design principles. Uh, especially in America, they refuse to uh, to sort of realize that there is something called DP2. They they believe strongly that you have to have a bureaucracy, and I think Norway has the sort of similar uh, effect. Uh, there is more focus on democracy here than probably in America, but we still haven't. At least Hanna and the group they really hasn't taken in the DP the, the, the DP still. So uh, so she uh, when she says there's no research on this, it's because she can't she hasn't seen looked the really, uh, looked into what happened uh, with Emrys after he left Norway after the studies there, because that's where that that happened, right? So that hasn't been that hasn't been taken back to the SDS community after he left. That's my hypothesis. Hmm. No. Yeah. And can I just maybe jump in there just uh, yeah. off the back of what you said, Trond? Um, there are now examples of DP two like organizations, like you know, famous ones. You know, you have Boots, you have Hire, you have a um, bunch of others, um, where literally they have no managers, right? No, not not less. There is no manager, right? Because they designed the entire organization from ground up based on democratic. Um, principles. Maybe they weren't aware of anything uh, called DP2, but when you look at their structure, it is very DP2-like. So I think I think a lot of people still believe that, oh, you still need bureaucracy, you still need managers. Um, and I think now we have enough proof to say, no, you do not need managers. For human organization, you could run an entirely democratic. It doesn't mean some people will not lead, but the leaders are chosen by the teams and the teams can, the groups can take away their leadership anytime, right? And they feel they are not leading. So I think, and leadership is an emergent property of the system, not a, uh, not a position, right? It's a role in a specific context at a specific time. That they merge, um, we we experience it in uh, outside of work all the time, right? Um, but it's very strange that in a lot of democratic democratic countries, uh, where we choose our leader or we change them, and uh, we expect um, we expect to be respected, and and we have a large amount of agency. We've we've agreed <laughs> to this autocratic model of organization where you go in there and you have almost no right to change anything, to decide who do you want to work with, to set your own goal, to hire and fire people, right? So because, you know, as a team, you should decide who needs to be part of your team. You should decide how you spend your budget. You should decide what your goal is. Yes, within the bounds of agreed goals and a structure and, and all of that, but it's very strange that in a democratic country, we have such authoritarian, centrally managed, <laughs> um, almost dictatorial uh, approach to running organizations. And we are okay with it. That's that's very <laughs> strange. That's a big Alice or Alidad in the Wonderland question for me. <laughs> Do you want to answer that or is it rhetorical? Uh, sounded rhetorical to me. <laughs> I want to I want to see that book published though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Gare has sort of set a new standard in the sense that he's using the Zoom tools to actually raise his hand. So what we might do is we'll, we'll switch to the more formal mechanism of raising hands. And uh, do you want to ask ask your question or make your comment? <laughs> it's a comment. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, and and it's it's a reflection. Uh, 
based based on um, on what you said about the the Scandinavian countries, we I think we have a more democratic orientation than 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 many. But I think there's also another thing that I I became aware of relatively recently uh, reading very very early SCS literature is that the 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 organization of work um, or rather the organization of people and and ending up in in bureaucratic or more bureaucratic than we'd want and some sometimes autocratic organizations is connected very much with how we decide to to, to split up the work so it's it's finding out how should we split up work and how should we split up responsibilities should it be uh, according to um, kind of subject matter silos, or should it be uh, relative to the function that we're trying to fulfill, etc. And that defines or decides the the structure of the organization. And unless you have very good mechanisms uh, in place for working with making the the decision making distributed, the it becomes the natural way of or structuring the organization as well. So I think a lot of work can be done not just by trying to push back against the bureaucratization of the organization, but rather finding better ways of describing a, a breakdown of the work, not traditional work breakdown structures from, from projects, for example, or by subject matter area. And so there's a lot to, to be done there, I think. That's healthy. Yeah, and I think, too, that um, AI is going to amplify and accelerate that. Um, you know, looking at processes, all sorts of things. Um, where you'll have AI um, co-pilots and autopilots and all that sort of stuff. And that's where I see the big opportunity for OST is um, it's going to turn work on its head, I reckon, in the next five years. Yeah, uh, I think you could be right there, uh, Peter. There is an opportunity there. I'm just hoping that if EJ connects to audio, uh, we might get EJ to introduce him or herself. Um, but if not, why don't we uh, why don't we we throw to Dave? Yeah, you've been patiently waiting there. That's all good. I just wanted to say hi. Sorry for the debacle that was uh, trying to get online today. It was um, it was a bit of a nightmare. Um, so I'm glad to be here now, and I'm just listening. I've been listening to the conversation since mostly from the beginning, probably missed the first ten minutes. <clears throat> I think it's really interesting though, because uh, the, on the course with with Marilyn, uh, we did go through a thing around group dynamics and the introduction of what happens to group dynamics when you introduce a a leader or a uh, not so much a leader, a manager to the group and what happens to the, the dynamic there. This is all Bion and Argus type stuff, yeah. Um, moving from, I forget what they all are now, the BAs, the BAF to BAD to, yeah, <laughs> through to BAW, through to the um, actual creative working groups, which you only get in a DP2 structure. Um, so it, it's interesting to, the, the struggle though is the reality is we're working in organisations which are already <laughs> very DP1 or mixed mode. Yeah, so the struggle is not so much um, how can we create organisations from scratch for most of us and design them along DP2 principles. It's how can we work within organisations which are very entrenched DP1. Yeah, uh, that's really, for, for me, the hardest part. And I think it was part of it. Not, not sure whose question it was. It might have been Paul's around how would you do, how would you introduce OST into an organisation where the CEO has heard nothing about it? I think we asked that we sort of asked Marilyn a really similar question on the course, and and her response was, "You don't. You just help them with the problems that they've got, and in helping them with the problems you, that they've got, you introduce uh, concepts of OST in as as you're going, sort of thing, without having to hijack them and take them on a um, a search conference specifically. But you might actually structure something very search conferency like <laughs> along the along the way as well." So yeah, I I I actually don't know. Peter's obviously had more more experience of this than 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 any of us here on the call. Um, that's why it's been great to hear his stories as well. But it's it's only Peter, I think, when you're invited into that space to actually make those changes that you can actually move. I think a DP one organization to a space. Uh, uh, if you only can do that if you have the invite. So that's yeah. Sorry, it wasn't really a question either, was it? it was, so uh, I guess. 
it was a good answer, a good sort of uh, you know, answer. I'm 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 really keen to see if uh, EJ, who is connected to audio now, whether you can unmute and maybe introduce yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm really late. I've had huge issues with my um, technology. So I'm just coming in to listen um, and uh, see what I can learn from, from the talking. Right. Do you have any questions, EJ? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. I'll um, let people talk on. And are you okay to be called EJ? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. No worries. Okay. Look, at, at some stage, um, I'm just thinking... Uh, Paul, are you okay if we loop back to you with your question to say, well, on the basis of some of what you've heard, do you feel like you're, you know, well, is there a burning platform that you feel you could use to introduce solutions that might be uh, somewhat OST related? Or um, do, do you see problems that need to be addressed within the organization you're in? Uh, I guess Paul is on mute and probably if you can't unmute yourself. Um, I, oh, okay, fair enough. Thanks for that, EJ. Um, I'm going to be, uh, show, throw a provocative question in there. Okay. Based on the fact that, um, you know, uh, we've all also had within this group some discussions around some of the modern methods of uh, of democratic organizations and Bertok has just been mentioned and Ross who is not here today um is a uh, I think he's trained in Rendon high the higher method um what stops us from just uh suggesting something like Rendon high uh I hope I pronounced it right Rendon high is um uh, what what stops us from just adopting this? Why do we have to involve OST? Um, and uh, uh, you know what what would be the advantages that OST gives us over something like Rend and High? Okay, Ali, yeah, Ali, Dad, you've got your hand up. I have, um, and Dave can probably jump in, or anyone else. I have a studied Rend and High, Rend and High, and um, in the last few months deeply with the knowledge of OST. So read anything that I could about them, watched a lot of videos from the employees as well as consultants, etc. cetera. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a very simple answer to that, Martin. Um, adopting Rendon here without knowing OSD or the other one that I want to mention um, is like adopting a Spotify model. That's that. OSC provide you the, um, the theory um, and the practice that you can implement those type of approaches in your context. Even with Rendon High, when they uh, implemented it in US, it looks it looks different to what they did in China. And when they did it in, in uh, Europe, it was different. My sense is if they knew about OSD, um, they could have actually come up with some sort of a unique design and a very different approach. And it would look different to what is in China, but you still get the same sort of result and outcome you get from entrepreneurial, radically decentralized democratic organization, which uh, with some sort of a platform that, that supports it. Um, so that's my, I don't know, one minute answer, but there is the, the there could be deeper answers, but I, that's, I'll let others to contribute. Anyone else care to jump in? Yeah, sure. Like, um, I'm, like me and Ali Dad talk about this a lot, so I'm, I'm just going to say what Ali Dad said, but maybe probably different words. Um, I think, I think a lot of the problem in in systems thinking specifically is that there seems to be like one group hates the other group, and they're, they're all wrong because you're using the wrong version of this and yeah, um, I think there's it's a mistake to uh, approach something like Rendon Hui as something that isn't something that can actually benefit from the understanding of OST or socio-technical systems. I think to put them up against each other as if they're competing for a market or competing on something is probably a mistake. It's probably a good idea to look at things like Rendon Hui with an OST lens 
because like Elliot says, I think it gives you a deeper understanding of why they're doing it this way or why that works. It's not the same. It is different. It is unique. But it is probably, I think, from what I can see, even more so than Bertzorg to a, to a degree, probably more DP2 than even Bertzorg is in terms of, um, in terms, yeah, of, of redundancy of function type approaches uh, through micro enterprises. It's it's pretty fascinating. I'm I'm only really halfway through studying the, the coursework on Rin and Hui. So, yeah. So, but as I'm watching, I'm thinking, well, this is really similar to what you would do. Um, from a search conference, like a lot of the stuff is about understanding what's happening in, in the external environment before you rush into thinking about what the internal system is going to be like as well. So there's some big parallels. It's not the same. That, thanks, Dave. Uh, Dave and Alidad, I thought your question, your answer was perfect. Um, Tron, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I agree, of course, with everything that's been said. But and also, I have thought about this a fair bit. So I haven't studied as much of of, of the techniques that probably the rest of you guys have. But um, my impression is that, um, or my thinking is that the uh, OST is like that's a research uh, thing. Like the uh, they have looked at what company does. So if they had looked at hire, if they had looked at bootstrap, they probably they would be been incorporated in that 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 way of looking at things. Um, so over, but but over the years, they also have refined this uh, theoretical background, like the, which is the open system theory, and especially the techniques. So yeah, I completely agree that that the techniques would probably have helped companies. Um, so um, I don't see them as different, just just um, different strands looking at the same thing, basically. So fantastic. Um, actually leads me into another idea, which is sort of a little bit off uh, uh, off topic here. But it's this idea that, um, you know, within this group, we've got expertise in an, uh, quite a wide variety of, let's call them different approaches. And I wonder if there's a bunch of white papers here waiting to be written, you know, which sort of says how, you know, for want of a better title, OST informs the success of team topologies, or OST informs the success of Rendon Hai, or whatever else it might be, you know. Um, so that it sort of acts as a little bit of a uniting, you know, uh, view, uh, more of a sort of all encompassing, you know, I, I, I love the, um, the, the sort of Ashby requisite variety stuff where you sort of think about, well, how are we within all of these sort of approaches and methods and tools, and if you like, you know, um, what, uh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Ali Dad. Well, they'll sponsor the research insofar as I could probably spend my time on it. <laughs> I'm not sure that uh, they're necessarily gonna sponsor your time, Ali Dad. I'm sorry for that. Uh, okay, thanks, Trond. But Thank now, you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate the input. Um, I guess a question for the rest of the audience, how long do we want to go? Um, because originally you had this running through till 7.30 hour time. Um, I'm sure Gear has got to get off to work in, in Norway. Um, do we want to continue a bit longer? I've got a supercell storm just coming over the top of me, so I'll probably lose connection. It's getting very dark and lots of lightning around. Mm. So we, if we could uh, have another session down the track, mm -hmm. if you want to, because um, I'm going to lose. I, I lost connection before when we had a lightning bolt, and I'll probably get. I can, I can see it's getting very dark there, Peter. We can barely see you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I lost uh, the whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's getting dark. Okay. Um, and as I said, I'll flick this UD plan off to you, Martin, and you can distribute it to. And maybe, okay. um, maybe a second session could be uh, around the possibility of a UD unique design workshop yeah. within an organisation. Okay. Can I get some feedback about it? Blah blah blah. I, I'd be keen to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, now Paul has his hands up. Can I invite you to? Uh... Can you hear me now? 
Yep, we can hear you. Hey. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, i um, very keen to, to have another one. Hopefully I can uh, work technology a bit better by that time. Um, thanks, uh, Peter and David, in particular, for your, your responses around um, the you know, introducing it to, into my situation. Yeah, there is a something of a burning platform, and it is around, I think, David, where you went around what those team models could be. Um, you know, moving away from the bureaucracy and that hierarchy that um, that government effectively imposes um, through the you know, the different grading levels and reporting lines that that are inherent there, um, but really keen to understand a bit more, and maybe this session or maybe another session um, around what you know what those teams could be, because um, I think we we might gravitate to cross functional teams, but I think you alluded to it doesn't have to be that style of team okay yeah i'll uh with uh, can you hear me um i'll flick through my Qantas case study uh yeah. which which not Qantas, uh telstra um where we had to set up team-based structures so telstra to be able to maintain Qantas as yeah. a customer uh and that was highly bureaucratic and we weren't allowed to change ebas anything like that yeah so, i've got Paul on my LinkedIn, so I can easily flick something through to him, Peter, if you want to yep. use me as an intermediary. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, okay, well, thanks for that, Paul. With that, I think we can end on a high note because, number one, we've got, um, you know, a practical possibility of, uh, of, of someone wanting to... Uh, uh, to look at uh, Peter Erpel looking at this for, for his particular case. Um, interest in having another session like this. Uh, I guess we'd have to go away and think about this. Um, just a point, with Paul, for you. The reason we're having this at 6 p.m. is to make sure that it's friendly for our European friends, um, which is also why they have to all go at 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, no worries at all. we'll work about, around that so thanks very much for everyone's participation thank you very much Ali Dad for setting this up that was a sort of like an instantaneous let's set up a meetup and boom you know within half an hour everything was up there on the meetup site and thanks everyone for participating it's uh, I, I think it's been a very enjoyable chat I think there's a lot of wisdom that's been there in uh, in, in all your, your comments and questions Thanks, uh, Martin and Ellie Dad, for organising it. Everybody have a safe and happy festive season, Christmas, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> same. Uh, Thanks, Peter, and same to yeah. everybody. Yeah. Same to everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All morning, all the, good night and good Bye -bye. morning. <laughs> yeah, all the best. Thanks, all. See you guys. Bye.